All right, thanks for coming back, and I hope you've had fun practicing the lip technique of jug playing since the last lesson. Now that you're able to make some sound and change pitches, we can add the jug and see what that does for our sound. Now, most of the sound comes from your lips, and what the jug does is kind of amplifies or enhances the sound, makes it a little more boomy and a little louder. Uh, my favorite jug is the classic ceramic style that I got at an antique store. And uh, here's, here's the difference. I hope you can hear a difference. I sure can from, from right here where I'm sitting. If you can and you're watching this on your computer, you might try to put on some headphones and that'll bring out the low end. Of course, the jug is a bass instrument, so you can't hear it very well through those little computer speakers, but headphones should bring out that sound. Okay, so um, the placement of the jug is kind of important. You want to have it uh, maybe about an inch away from your lips, and you're not playing the jug like this, like a lot of people think you're playing straight into it, like it's a trumpet mouthpiece or a trombone mouthpiece straight into it and about an inch away and you can experiment a little bit with distance but if it's too cl uh, too far away it won't really do anything for you and if it's too close it'll kind of choke the sound um, so just play around with the jug and just find that sweet spot Now the next thing we need to talk about is what kind of a jug uh, you can play. Like I said, this is my uh, ceramic model, but I have lots of different jugs, and uh, every uh, jug has a little bit different sound and a little bit different characteristics. But I always say that you can't tell what it's going to sound like until you try it. So one ceramic jug might sound good, and another one might not. One plastic water bottle might not sound good, and another one might sound as good as the ceramic jug. So. Now it's the time where you get to experiment with anything you have around the house that you think you might be able to play jug into. So I'll give you a couple examples from my collection here. I've got a, um, a glass medicine bottle that I got from a science surplus store. And it does uh, amplify the sound quite a bit. Uh, it doesn't have the big uh, boominess that the ceramic jug has. It's just a small thing. But this fits in my guitar case, so I take this uh, to jam sessions a lot when I don't want to bring the big jug. I um, also have actually just a pop bottle. This is kind of a weird uh, dandelion and burdock soda that I got at the local store. Um, but after I drank it, I realized it has a surprisingly good sound. Not all pop bottles are going to do that for you, but I kept that one. Um, and you can just play a regular water bottle if you're in a pinch. This is just a plastic water bottle. Not bad, actually. That's probably second only to the big ceramic jug. And that's just a bottle of water that, you know, I picked up somewhere. Now, if you're really in a pinch and you want to show off your jug skills, there are a couple substitutions you can do. Um... Besides the plastic water bottle, you can just do a water glass. This one has water in it, but if it were empty, it would sound a little better. And uh, really, in a pinch, you could just use your hand. Makes a little difference. Um, okay, uh, so experiment. Oh, you know, one other kind of jug that I don't have right here but that I uh, recommend usually is like a half gallon plastic uh, milk or cider jug, that thin plastic. Some of those sound really good. But again, you just have to uh, try some different ones and experiment and see what, see what you like. Um, I guess I should say something about cleaning the jug, uh, especially if you're getting something old like this from an antique store. Um, it, you want to watch out the first time you play it because a lot of dust could come out of there and get in your eyes. So uh, be careful of that. And uh, if you do buy the jug, you want to clean it out. And the best technique, I think, is to uh, fill it with water and uh, about a teaspoon of baking soda and just let that soak overnight. And that'll kind of clean it out and absorb any bad smells that are in there. You don't want to use uh, chemicals or bleach because 
that's going to stay in your jug and then you're going to be breathing it every time you play. So uh, be good to your lungs and just use some baking soda and uh, you might need a couple of treatments to get everything out of there. Um, if you're just using an orange juice uh, jug, the, it's not that big of a deal. It might smell good. Um, okay, so uh, that's uh, how to select the jug. And if you are in uh, an opportunity to perform, if you're fortunate enough to perform on the jug, um, you might have to uh, mic your jug. You, in fact, you will have to mic your jug. It's not that loud. And so uh, we should talk about mic placement a little bit. Um, basically, the loudest sound is right here between your lips and the opening of the jug. And so that's a good place to put the mic. If this is your microphone, you just want to get right up to it like this. So if I'm singing into the mic and then I want to play jug, I'll turn sideways and uh, get it right up in there. So it's about equal distance between the lips, the jug, and the microphone. Be careful not to blow right into the mic. Uh, that'll make a, a unpleasant sound through the uh, speaker system. But um, if you get the air going just beside the mic and still picking up the sound, that's where you want to be. And I have to say, I do perform uh, with my jug, and uh, uh, the sound is not always great, and sometimes it's hard to get it mic'd properly, but when there's a big uh, loud sound system and I can get in there and get in the mix and I hear my jug booming out over the audience, it's quite a rush. So uh, have fun picking out a jug and do some performing if you can, or just keep on practicing. And in lesson three, we will talk about the most important thing, which is what notes to play on your jug. So we'll see you then.